When I was thinking about this video, I kind of wanted to talk about Braun Breaker. I wanted to talk a little bit about Carmelo Hayes, maybe. But then Elimination Chamber came up and Tiffany Stratton is on the horizon. And you probably click because you think that I'm going to talk about Tiffany Stratton. But I'm going to talk more about how the superstars of NXT 2.0 have better rise better integration than the superstars of the gold brand, the black and gold NXT. I don't know how many of you have watched NXT and how many of you have captured the start of NXT 2.0, but if you remember back two years ago when NXT 2.0 have started, or maybe now it's three years, a lot of superstars came in out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, they just replaced some old stars, they put on some new. Braun Breaker was having zero matches under his belt, but he instantly was a star. They put the belt on him. Carmelo Hayes got the North American Championship as well. Uh, I believe the Women's Championship was taken as well. It was wild times. And I don't want to say that the same thing is happening now on SmackDown and Raw, but I feel like all of these superstars from the NXT 2.0 are pushed heavily to the moon and I feel like they're these kind of rocket projects. Like, they're saying, okay, these 10 guys, we are hiring them and we are strapping a rocket to them from the start all the way to the finish lines. Because Braun Breaker signed to SmackDown and he had immaculate match against another 2.0 superstar that was not that heavily pushed as well. He looked like a jobber even. Some people might be triggered that I'm saying that they're NXT 2.0 superstar, but they are. They are. Braun Breaker, Camaro Hayes, Tiffany Stratton, um, Roxanne Perez, and a couple more that are still not in SmackDown or Raw, but they're there. And don't get me wrong, I want these new guys to be pushed, I want these new guys to have opportunity, but it's a little bit weird all of these superstars to be pushed, and in the meantime, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa to be a comedy act for DX, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate to have new strange music and lose, Bronson Reed to be at the bottom of the mid-card, to take three years for Karrion Cross to finally do something, like, the black and gold era of NXT was so special and it was so much better than the NXT 2.0. I'm not saying that the NXT 2.0 superstars are not good, but this special thing was taken and not utilized. I don't know why. Probably because these people are not actually as good of entertainers as their wrestlers. I don't think so. Karrion Cross is doing amazing promo packages, amazing promos, and he's just lost in the mix. I would love to see some titles on Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, and in fact, it doesn't make any sense to pair up them in DIY, when in reality, the, the last thing they have done in NXT was feuding with each other and even Triple H came out and he was like, enough of this, this is gonna be the final feud of both of you and you're gonna fight till the end of your lives. And it was an insane match between both of them and yeah, and now they're just doing, we are, we are the X. Yeah, that's, that's the situation right now. About the Tiffany Stratton, I can say this. Tiffany, I know you're watching this video, but girl, uh-uh, you need a lot more work to do. Sorry, but as someone on Twitter said, you look like you were hurrying for something in that Elimination Chamber match. Put her against someone in the mid card, for example, Shotzi. Shotzi is another example of the black and gold era who was just put in the sidelines. Put her against Shotzi. You will see how Shotzi will shine. Even though Tiffany Stratton has the most beautiful moonsault or whatever. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't. It doesn't. So, anyway, with that being said, I wish all the NXT 2.0 superstars and the black and gold superstars good luck. 
and I want to see them all better utilized, but it's not up to me. I have said in the past, I believe in Triple H, and I believe at some point he will find a good place for them. Peace.